Tugara has felicitated with Nigerian Muslim Omar as they join other believers all over the world to commemorate the birthday of Prophet Muhammad. In a statement issued by his special advisor on media and public affairs, Turaki Hassan, Dogara enjoined the faithful to continue to demonstrate in their lives the good virtues of the Prophet so as to engender the peace and unity needed for growth and development. The speaker also enjoined the Ummah to use the occasion to pray for continued unity, peace and progress of the nation. The celebration of Malut should also renew faith and increase tempo in coming together as a people of common destiny to pray for unity, peace, progress and stability of the nation for the country to attain its aspirational growth and development. He added. Uh, moving on and straight now to Oyo State, where Governor Abiola Jimobi has appealed to Muslims and Nigerians at large to continue to tolerate each other and live in unity. Ajimabi said that Nigerians must continue to learn from the Holy Prophet who distinguished themselves and make life conducive for others. The governor charged Nigerians to equally exhibit the spirit of love, especially with the lingering economic downturn in the country. Since from his life and lifestyle, and there are about eight lessons to be drawn, but the most important one is to fear God, is godliness, hmm? to respect others, to wish others good. In the same vein, back here in Lagos, some Muslim faithful have joined their counterparts worldwide to mark Eid al Malud. Are they set aside to celebrate the birthday of Prophet Muhammad? Some Muslim leaders who spoke to Galaxy News admonished Muslims to use the occasion to reflect on the life of the Holy Prophet and imbibe some of his sterling qualities, which include peace and patience. Say you are a truth believer. You will be tested by Allah with the challenges we are facing in this country. We should try to, to reflect back to the life history of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he faces many challenges and he is very prayerful and he's a very patient man. What we are doing, we are celebrating the Holy Prophet Muhammad as well as we follow the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For this reason, I do believe that it is very important for Muslim and compulsory for Muslim to be doing this. <laughs> Ido Malud was declared public holiday by the federal government of Nigeria. And away from all of the celebrations in not too cheering a story now, five policemen have been ambushed and killed by Fulani militia in Newman area of Adamawa state. The security personnel were among those deployed by the Inspector General of Police. Ibrahim Idris a few days ago to restore law and order in the areas following farmers and herdsmen clash that resulted in the deaths of schools. Last week, Numen local government area is the headquarters of villages that are recently facing farmers and herdsmen war, where lives are being lost. The Brigade Commander 23 Armored Brigade Yola, Brigadier General Mohammed Bello said it was a fierce battle that the military had to engage with the militias. At the time of following this report, Newman Town and surrounding villages were practically deserted and economic activities crippled as some of the indigents narrate their ordeals. The set of Fulani people, maybe they were mobilizing for action. And then the police went there this morning and they have problem between them and the police. That some, they have some casualty because when my uh, officer went there this morning, they have to evacuate so casualty and give to boys no more than 30 or so 1 p.m four corpses were brought of policemen with multiple injuries one was taken this afternoon and three were left you're still watching the news on galaxy television still ahead when we return economic community of west african state ECOWAS insists on women participation in agriculture Details in a moment. Do join us again. Moving on, the ECOWAS Parliament is championing the cause for a greater participation of women in the agricultural sector. 
and as such is hosting a meeting geared towards promoting gender equality in agricultural investment in Africa. Galaxy's Godfrey Ishimage, who has been at a two-day meeting for the Air Force parliamentarians hold or holding in Abuja, rather, reports that the agenda of the meeting include having a thorough look at the policy and institutional framework that will make it easy for women to carve a niche for themselves in agriculture. A member of the Air Force Parliament and a member of the House of Representatives of Dambowa Gwaza Chibok Federal Constituency, Borno State, Honorable Asabe Valita, says the meeting could be the full step towards having a paradigm shift in agriculture in the country. Our in most of our African societies, especially in Nigeria, women are the ones that go to even farm. In some communities, men do not even go to farm. So, but we are really constrained because some of the laws and the, some of the, uh, the, 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 the policies do not encourage women to participate actively in farmers or to take the law, that is to take the bull by the horn, like to own it. They are just doing it for the men that are at home. So this conference is very strategic in the sense that it will, uh, it will come up with so many policies that, uh, and policy statements that will favor the women so that they can also be empowered. The ECOWAS Parliament is organizing the meeting in collaboration with key development partners, including the International Institute for Sustainable Development and Oxfam. This meeting were about how parliamentarians see this problem within the region and also in their own country, and how best uh, to implement the existing framework that are already in the ECOWAS region, and also what are the tools, practical tools, that could be uh, put in place to facilitate their works towards achieving women empowerment? And because we all know that in our countries, in our communities, usually half of our people are not listened to, and that half is women. So that's why we are here to actually discuss with parliamentarians so that women rights, gender rights, gender issues can be actually taken into account while governments are negotiating those large-scale investments in agriculture. Well, moving on, the Director General of the National Broadcasting Commission, Ishak Modibu Kawa, has explained that lack of funds from the federal government has been responsible for the delay of the national digital switchover. Ishak, who in company of the Minister for Information, Lai Mohammed, inspected the Kwara State uh, station rather says switching over is expensive and will require a lot of fund. He noted that it will be done in phases as the country is presently coming out of recession and could not put all the resources in the switch over project alone. Country, we are going to be doing launches in phases. That's the decision we took because a, a digital switch over in a very huge country like this requires a lot of funds. And when Nigeria is just moving out of recession and the country has to take a decision between putting money in infrastructure development, hospitals and whatnot, and also having to put a huge amount of money into digital switchover. I'm sure if Nigerian government says we put all the money in digital switchover, you'll be the very first person to complain. Earlier in an interview, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, gave reason for the visit. While the field engineer, Edward Amala, explained why Kwara State is yet to switch over completely. Here to come and um, have a first hand uh, inspection of the level of readiness for the digital, digital switchover for Kwara State. I'm sure you've had. Um, over the last couple of months, a lot of cacophony of voices as to the readiness or otherwise, the standard or otherwise of the uh, station in Ilorin. Ready to take off in Ilorin. Okay. We've seen the installation. Now, uh, what was lacking before has been rectified. There's some level of redundancy now built into the transmission system. Right now, we're Transmitting 26 channels as at now, right? 26, 27, cha 27 plus channels plus NTA. plus NTA. Moving on and talking health now. 
as Nigeria joins the rest of the world to mark their 2017 World AIDS Day in Abuja. Health-based groups that focus on HIV and AIDS say the government needs to show more commitment to help end the negative impact of the epidemic in the country. The group comprising civil society organizations and a network of people living with HIV AIDS in Nigeria held a walk in Abuja as part of activities to mark the day. They say the Nigerian government needs to do more in terms of better funding for HIV treatment. December 1 every year is set aside to mark World AIDS Day as a way of creating awareness on the impact of the global epidemic. The theme of this year's event is Right to Health. In the same vein from Quara State, as resident Gathered to mark the 2017 World AIDS Day in Makoti, the state capital, Benson Abono, the state deputy governor, says the state has made remarkable progress in the fight against HIV and AIDS. Speaking at a ceremony organized by Ben Saka and other development partners and agencies, he expressed government's commitment to continue to give support to eradicate the epidemic and those living with it. Instead of us, can be undermined, but with our government's commitment, human capital resources and partner support, we will achieve desired result. A, develop a development partner who have been given free HIV testing, distribution of condoms, as well as educating the public said over 300,000 people are currently infected with the disease in Benue, adding that government must step up funding and advocacy program. Executive Secretary of Bensaka, Dr. Gideon Duru, said the agency has ensured the implementation of HIV AIDS policies in controlling the prevalence, while Rose Okoli, one of the participants and a movie producer during an interview, called for sustained screening. A lot of progress also in the area of stigma and discrimination against those that are infected. Today we live with these people we have realized as very state normally state for us to be able to get HIV. Because we know that HIV AIDS is just like any other disease and there is no reason whatsoever to discriminate against anyone who is infected. I can also confirm here the representative of my excellency, wife of the executive governor of Benue State, Dr. Seem to know their status and getting uh, placed on treatment without longer waiting time, as the standard for I mean, operating procedures have actually changed for the better. We have the right to health, and uh, we must be healthy. HIV virus is new. We have to get tested from time to time. But today I got tested, and I'm happy. I know that I'm free. So um, I want to say, for us to live healthy and remain healthy, we have to always know our status. In the meantime, residents of River State have been assured of government's commitment to enhancing the prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV. Deputy Governor Dr. Ipalibo Hari Banigo disclosed this during the commemoration of the 2017 World HIV and AIDS Day. According to her, community testing services has helped to create HIV awareness, thereby making people know their status and seek proper medical services. We are not just staying in the health of community, we are going out to communities to do the testing. And somebody wanted to know, has been brought to a village. Well, I want to tell you that we have not had any stock out for antiretrovirus. We have not had. 
Now, Commissioner for Health, Professor Chike Principal, said that modern drugs for HIV is very effective in suppressing the virus. He said those living with the disease can live a fulfilled life as long as they take their medication as prescribed. War against HIV is, is still on. It is not over. The statistics, yes, don't be described in the but we are still having high incidence going on. However, you can tell. Whatever you can do. To enlighten the people, to educate the people, to make them conscious and aware. Meanwhile, the coordinator for people living with HIV and AIDS, P. Sukari, advised pregnant women to stop patronizing traditional birth attendants, stressing that it exposes the unborn child to the risk of contracting HIV. always supports those living with the virus. Stigmatization is far worse than anything. Therefore, we are asking everybody to join in the fight against it. You still watch it, the news on Galaxy Television. When we return from this break, group advocates concerted efforts to achieve sustainable development goals. Details in a moment. Stay with us. Thank <laughs> you.